Thank you, Mr. President. Dear colleagues, this is the fourth time the Council is meeting in Ukraine in a matter of weeks. Every time we meet, reality on the ground confirms bit by bit what some of us have been anticipating. Russia has been saying one thing and doing its contrary. We were told troops were retreating when they only have increased. We were told to stop hysteria since troops were in Russian territory. No longer, they are invading a neighbor unprovoked with false pretexts, false narratives and fabricated news. Every development unfolding in the last 48 hours confirms to us and to the world that Russian worries have nothing to do with, with its security, that its anxieties are not linked to NATO enlargement, that this issue is not a confrontation between Russia and the West. This is a confrontation between Russia and international law, the UN Charter that it deliberately has chosen to ignore, a confrontation between a hegemonistic vision and the rules-based world order. Dear colleagues, it's not about Russia's concern, it's about Russia's appetite. The Ukrainians are facing another aggression just because they dare to exist, because they have chosen to be independent, because they have opted for democracy. Dear colleagues, this is a dark hour, not only for Ukraine, but for the entire international community as we witness with trepidation the progression of a pure act of aggression carefully planned and cold-bloodedly being executed. We called and hoped for a back down of the Russian Federation from this senseless, destructive and self-destructive action. We repeat the same call for Russia to stop, to reflect, to reverse its illegal decisions, to withdraw from this senseless madness, to de-escalate, not to push towards precipice. Several mechanisms are in place and various proposals have been made, including by President Zelensky, whose calls remain unanswered. Diplomacy is like hope, it dies last. But for it to work, it must be seized, not ignored, as the Secretary General just called for here. We call on the fellow members of the Security Council to rally in support of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Russia has been warned repeatedly that they will be alone in this foolishness, that they will be responsible for the innocent lives lost, including Russians maybe, and for the destruction caused in the heart of Europe in the 21st century. If they choose to continue to execute their plans as everything indicates, they will bear not only the consequences of the war, but also the historical blame and shame of invading a neighboring country when its responsibility as a big country, as a permanent member of the Security Council, calls for it to work and help preserve peace and security, not to torpedo it. We reiterate our support to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally organized borders and territorial waters. In concluding, I welcome the presence of the permanent representative of Ukraine to this meeting. I would like to convey to him, to the Ukrainian government and people, that at this mom most critical moment in their history, they are not alone and we stand firm in full solidarity with them for their rights to, free, to be free and choose who they want to be. I thank you.